How are we doing? Good. How are you? My camera's kind of wonky. Hi, Miracle. <laughs> she, the minute, the minute you point the camera at her. It's she, amazing. No. It, she knows. She's like, no, fuck you. No. She, yep. she knows. She does. So you found a new toy today. Why don't you tell us about it? I found, I don't even know what the app is called. <laughs> it's, it's the fabulous app of kitties. Emily, Nico Atsumi. It's a phone app and, and you buy toys and, and sushi and food and little kitties come and play in your yard. Look at that little kitty playing with a ball right now. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. And you don't really do anything like you can't interact with the kitties. You just buy stuff and then they come and hang out and they leave you fish so you can buy more stuff so you can attract more kitties. That's pretty well. Yeah, you, know, you can't really interact with them. You can't. Re you just. You, that's, you just look at them because they're cute. That's pretty much cats. Yeah. <laughs> She's falling asleep with the little hippo. <laughs> what was that noise? That's the "Don't bother me" grunt. That's the "I'm sleeping." Don't touch my butt. I'm sleeping. <laughs> we hear a lot of those over the. That's. You know, she has a very, she has an elaborate dialect of grunts. There's the, she does this little thing where like, she totally gives you like the bro grunt. Like she lifts her chin and grunts like, sup? <laughs> mm. Like, sup? <laughs> She's a weird little kitty. The yes, it is Crazy Cat Lady, the game. And it's amazing. The thing is, you understand her. So I, I guess... Do. We understand each other very well, this kitty and I. You're very well trained. I am exceptionally well trained. Miracle in fact, I had to call commanded. Miracle Eats prescription food because she's allergic to everything. So I had to call the vet today to order more of her food. And like an idiot, I did that while she was watching. So I had to pick up the bag. And if you touch the bag, you have to feed her. And now, here's not, the thing about this cat. Cool. She always has food in her bowl. Always. Like... It never runs out. Her bowl is never empty, but she really, really enjoys the ritual of being fed. So, which involves like, because she buys, she eats $80 a bag prescription food, we recycle it. So any food that hasn't been eaten, we pour back into the bag, shake up the bag and just scoop more out. She loves this ritual. Either that or she is convinced that once the food has been exposed to air for more than 10 minutes, it becomes poison. Because if you so much as walk by the bowl, food time? She's like the seagulls in Finding Nemo. So I made the mistake of picking up the bag in front of her and all of a sudden I'm on the phone with the vet and she's... So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's her. I promise I'm not kicking her. I just, I touched the bag and now she's losing her mind. So she got extra food time today which isn't really extra food time because she always has food just she really likes making us do stuff for her she's a cat yeah that's all i had to say she's a cat everybody's like and yeah. i'm exceptionally well trained so i pretty much do whatever she wants well it is again that time that that this time of year again it <laughs> is look at them it is the black friday recap yeah Except Miracle did not get any turkey because she can't eat turkey. She's she can only eat duck. That's the only protein she can eat. So, except this year, there was a little bit of a hitch. Black Friday sales started on Thursday. And were way down. Well, there were a few reasons for that. Mm. One, they started on Thursday and people were not liking that. Two... Black Lives Matter had a Black Friday blackout, what they called it. And they, as a movement, boycotted Black Friday. And it made a huge difference. In fact, in Detroit, they held such a large protest that a lot of the major shops down, I think, Michigan Avenue in Detroit had to close because shoppers couldn't get in. So for everybody that says Black Lives Matter doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, they know what they're doing. And they hit them where it hurts. But regardless of that, it is also part of a larger trend of the online sales skyrocketing this year in comparison. 
Yeah. In fact, I did my Black Friday shopping online. In fact, it was so big that Walmart's website started crashing. Target's crashed today. Target's website. So everyone moved online. So we could potentially be seeing the end of the whole Black Friday nonsense. Wouldn't that be nice? And stores did not profit from opening on Thanksgiving. So hopefully that trend is short lived. However, of course, just because there were less. Doesn't mean there were none. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here from the set. We like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? Now, not only did things, not only was there less, of the whole Black Friday shenanigans. People were, at, this has now become the new thing, it would appear. Let's let's look at this article, our first article tonight, that a uh, little suspicious for everybody involved. Black Friday shopper rich, re, rips vegetable steamer from kids' hands. Skeptics say brawl is too appalling to be true. Now, what this looked like initially, and I'm gonna show people here this this little this little fight that happened. Oh, I saw this video. This this little fight that happened, apparently, where you know she supposedly lady supposedly steals stuff from the other people. Online folks looked at it, and they're slowing it down here a little bit so you can have a look. They say it appears staged because number one, that kid she took the steamer from didn't actually get it from the pile. They already had it in his hand or his or her hand. I can't tell if it's a little girl or not before the whole thing started. So what we have now is the act of getting attention and trying to make viral videos they're trying to fake Black Friday brawls. I'm telling you, we are so not far from the Hunger Games. Is this, what the hell is going on? Cause I mean, let's let's be honest. Americans not fighting over a veggie steamer. If that was a TV. Or an Xbox, I might have believed you. But yeah. a veggie steamer? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. You couldn't give those things away on Black Friday to fucking Americans. No. Be like, hey, we'll give you this for free. No. And it I'm won't... one of them. I would walk past it. Poor Dan is trying to trick me into eating vegetables any fucking way he can. If they were like, free vegetable steamer, I'd be like, fuck yourself. Where are the french fries? I'm part of the problem. I know it. This... What is we're trying to stage a Black Friday brawl? Yeah. And doing it so badly, the internet looked at that and gone, no, nah, that ain't real. Why do you say that? Because we've seen the real fucking thing. Yeah. And it don't look like that. Kitty, I'm only able to get your butt in the shot. You need, you need to be a little accommodating. <laughs> no. No, I don't. Fuck you. The most unphotogenic cat. She's very photogenic. She's very cute. She just is grumpy <laughs> and cooperative. Now she's gonna lick her butt. Excuse me. <laughs> Hi. Just, just be cute for the camera for a little while. No. <laughs> they get my butt. Fuck them. They get she the knows butt. exactly the way to turn <laughs> to avoid the camera. Yep. And now you're gonna lick your butt for everybody. Okay. All right. Well, I tried. Just sit there and look like Smaug. But just because the whole, this one was staged, doesn't mean there were some real incidents. However, again, these were weird because they didn't appear to be any over any particular product. They just seemed to happen. First one comes to us from, uh, some melees in Walmart. 
of course. Brawls broke out at Walmart retail stores in Kentucky, Texas, and Louisiana. Tempers flared among shoppers at law enforcement as law enforcement agencies struggled to keep control. At a Louisville mall on Thanksgiving night, shoppers wrestled each other to the ground in a packed food court. Practice knocked the woman to the floor. Shoppers at the mall St. Matthews gawked at the sight of two unidentified men slapping, punching, and tearing at each other's shirts. Police broke up the fight, as shown in the video capturing at least 30 seconds of the melee. Then, um, in addition, a fight video circulated on social media early Friday morning showing a scuffle between a group of men at a mall in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, let's see. Big crowds have drawn scrutiny for unruly behavior, especially since the 2008 trampling death of a Walmart worker in Long Island. However, what's happening here is these aren't over products. These are straight up fights for fight's sake is what it seems to be going on here. The pro Well, the thing is you put enough people you cram them into a crowded place. I mean, this is designed to bring out the worst in people. And I, I'm pretty sure I say this every year. It, it continues to be ironic to me that we spend a whole day devoting ourselves to being thankful for what we have. And then the very next day or that same night, we go out and beat the shit out of each other to get more. There's an irony in that. But they're not beating the shit out of each other to get more. They're just beating the shit out of each other because they're just, there. Just because, yeah. Because I remember but when it gets like, I don't know. I don't know if you've worked retail during the holiday season. People get fucking ugly. It's just, it's a Petri dish of the worst of humanity. You're in a crowded place. It's hot. Nobody's moving. You're trying to get shit done and you can't. Your kids are screaming. It's just, it's a powder keg. But we have, we've in years past, people have had like, I remember the pepper spray incident. The mm -hmm. pepper sprayed shit just so they could get, you know, what was it, fucking television or something? I don't even fucking remember. The mall I used to work in, the year after I stopped working there, I went in on Black Friday at like 8 o'clock at night because Black Friday's over by the afternoon. So you go in at 8 o'clock at night, if you're not looking for any of the big deals, you can get shit. So I went in looking for Christmas decorations at Sears. And the guy told me, he's like, yeah, we just came off lockdown because a bunch of kids got in a brawl up at the food court and somebody yelled gun and they put the whole mall on lockdown for like two hours. We were just allowed to open back up half an hour ago. And this poor guy was fucked because the entire Sears tool department decided to fuck off and go home and didn't come back. And so there were people that were yelling at him about circular saws and shit and he's like dude i work in bedding I, I don't know what to tell you now we've got a lot of people saying oh you silly americans with your american black friday doing that american shit yeah guess what we're exporting that shit it's your problem now too we've exported it manchester this is fight involving three screaming women break out at a shopping center during black friday sales in manchester i've been to that mall I've been that mall. And Black Friday has even, they, they don't do Thanksgiving, so they don't even know what Black Friday is. They're just, they're, they're just copying us. It's like the definition of a cargo cult. Three women were caught in a vicious fight in the middle of Manchester's Arndale Shopping Center during the Black Friday sales. Police were called in an attempt to break up the brawl, which erupted around 7 p.m. on Friday evening. Dramatic footage shows the woman screaming and grabbing hold of each other as dozens of stunned shoppers look on. They continue grappling as two of them fall to the floor in a flurry of punches close to the Foot Asylum store. Foot Asylum? Foot Asylum, I guess. What? What is that? I don't know. I, I guess that's sort of like pay less, but with wordier words. Foot Asylum. Is that where you shop for shoes if you have restless leg syndrome? <laughs> And again, in this, no specific item was being fought over. They were just fighting. It doesn't matter. It's like a fucking zombie movie. Like, it's just, 
angry, shambling hordes. I think we've reached this point where Black Friday... Remember The Crow and Devil's Night? Yeah. I think Black Friday has is starting to evolve from a sales event to this weird anarchy. It's not so much Devil's Night as it is The Purge. Yeah! Yeah, I think we're, we're just sort of... People aren't even going shopping anymore. They're just going out to kick each other's asses. Yeah. Everyone who actually wanted to buy shit went online. Everybody else went out to Fight Club. And you know what? Fine. Let's do it that way from now on. Except <laughs> don't make the retail make workers work. Just have Thunderdome somewhere else. <laughs> Let the mall employees stay home. And everybody shop online. Oh, but, but as I say that, some people actually did do some shopping on Black Friday. And this, hey, this is from Clifton, New Jersey. So, you know, it's, it's close to your neck of the woods. Yeah. These two, well, they participated in commerce. You got to, you know, you've got to give these guys some credit for an original thought on this one. Thursday night, Thanksgiving night, burglars nabbed after Black Friday shopping spree. Two men who ransacked a home on Thanksgiving night were apprehended hours later as they went on a Black Friday shopping spree. Victor Serpa and Sean Smith, both 22-year-old Patterson residents, were charged with burglary and theft in Clinton and fraudulent use of a credit card. Family residing at the East 7th Street home returned at 11 p.m. on Thanksgiving, found their house ransacked of several thousand dollars worth of electronics, computer equipment, jewelry, and personal documents. Uh, while officers patrol division investigated the burglary, Serpa and Smith allegedly used credit cards stolen from the family to go on a shopping spree throughout northern New Jersey. The duo allegedly spent thousands at stores such as Target and Walmart. Dude, if you're gonna, if you're if you're shopping on someone else's credit card, aim a little higher. <laughs> what? It's still, it's not your money. <laughs> Live crazy, go to the Gap. Can you sit there, see? Can you just imagine them sitting there going, "Yeah, I know, I know, but I know we stole this, but it is too good of a deal to pass up." It's not your money. It's not your money. Why? Why do you care if you're saving? Why, why do you exactly? You're saving someone else's money <laughs> that you stole anyway. <laughs> Just go for the fucking gold. Well, go for the gold literally and wipe out the zales. <laughs> what are you doing at Walmart on a stolen credit card? Well, they had the Xbox bundle with with you know Uncharted. They had the Xbox Uncharted bundle. And it was too good to pass up. It doesn't matter. It's not your money. <laughs> it's not your money. <laughs> Go somewhere where there's not going to be a line because they're too expensive. It doesn't matter. It's not your money. Can you just imagine that? The, the, I can imagine some some uh, store using this for an advertising. The sales are so good, even the thieves can't pass them up. <laughs> yeah. Even the identity thieves that have your PIN number can't resist these bargains. I mean, what the fuck? The luxury places ask questions, Walmart don't give a shit? Actually, not true. I worked at a luxury retailer, and they don't ask questions because, God forbid, they offend a customer. Because rich people give their daughters their credit card, give their wives their credit card, yeah. give their, you know, trophy husband their credit card, give the fucking nanny their credit card. You don't dare question them because they're wealthy and entitled. So actually, the luxury places ask less questions unless you look like you don't belong there. I don't think these guys would look like they belong there. I mean... One of them looks like his hair is, is trying to escape. <laughs> it's a little red foo from that's that guy, right? LMFAO. Yeah, it, it looks like his hair is, is trying to, to get away. <laughs> hey, I've had that hair day. I'm not going to judge. 
But I mean, oh, oh, mother. <laughs> There's a happy ending. They were able to recover all the stolen items as well as the items purchased. So. Also, here's the other trick. Don't go on Thanksgiving and, and rob the house. Go on the Saturday after Thanksgiving because they've done their Black Friday shopping and you can cut out the middleman and just steal all the shit they've already bought. <laughs> Tara, you're helping way too much here. Because this is like, why go stand in the line yourself? Exactly. Let them stand in the line and then go steal the Xbox they stood in line for six hours to get. Come on. Let Not someone science. let someone else camp out in the Best Buy parking lot. You reap the reward. Jesus Christ. And then you don't have Tara. that nasty credit card fraud bullshit. Tara, stop helping. I'm just saying. No, you can't stop helping. Uh, but of course, we do have some more of our normal shenanigans this week because, you know, the crazy shit didn't stop just because of Black no. Friday. Oh my God. We, we keep having these airline passengers <sighs> that just... It's like they get on a plane and they stop thinking... They, it's, not, it's not like international waters. It's not like the loss stops happening when you're 30,000 feet. Oh boy, this guy's. And airlines are like the one place where the customer is always wrong. Like they don't give a fuck about customer service. Worst ever air rage passenger jailed for drunken rampage. Yasbir Sain Baraj, 46, was found guilty of drunkenness on aircraft, crimi aircraft criminal damage, racially aggravated words, and behavior and common assault. What does that mean? Him an asshole. Yeah. Air Rage Pastor Brandon, one of the worst ever, has been jailed after drunkly abusing cabin crew on a flight from Dubai to Birmingham. Uh, Barrage, 46, was labeled by a flight attendant as the worst passenger he'd ever encountered after he went on a rampage, which included, and they have bullet points in the article for this. There are bullet points on this shit. Threatening to punch a stewardess and biting a police officer, causing 2,500 pounds of damage to the in-flight entertainment system, swearing and embarking on a series of racist rants, dipping his finger in wine, and rubbing it onto his private parts. Okay. How do you do that much damage to the in-flight entertainment system? And why are you rubbing wine on your dick? <laughs> Those are my two questions. I mean, racism is pretty rote. Violence on the airline uh, doesn't really excite me anymore. How do you manage to do that much damage to the in-flight entertainment system? And why are you rubbing wine on your dick? You know... When I first embarked into adulthood, there were many questions I knew I would have to ask over the years. How many roads must a man walk down? Never did I ever think that I would have to ask, to ask the question, why are you rubbing wine on your dick? Like, is that an, I know the Altoid trick. Is that a new thing? Am I not hip to the new weird sex stuff? Is is there a thing? <laughs> and as for the as for the damage to the in-flight entertainment system, I'm trying to read here in the article. Um, threatened to punch an air hostage and damage the entertainment console. The best I can figure is that he yanked the it out of the back of the seat. Oh, yeah, that'd do it. But are those things worth that much each? Well, like, yeah, they're, they're custom built. Oh, all right. It's not like, you know, you slap slap an iPod in there and you're done. It's they build those specific and then the contracting company charges the airlines a whole fuck bunch of inflated dollars, True. which they pass on to you. I'm really stuck on this. Is there a wine thing I don't know about, Dan? Oh, it's <laughs> 
When I'm at home, do you just stick your dick in wine? That's why the wine bottles are cool. Oh, okay. You told me you were letting it breathe. I thought you meant the wine. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. I don't know if anyone heard his side of the conversation. That might not be oh, as funny. Oh, we did. As here. We okay. did. Okay. We did. <laughs> Nash is very upset with us. <laughs> oh, well. The fuck, yo? <laughs> Y'all ain't right. I just, I have questions about dicks. I asked the nearest person to me with one. <laughs> He's in the room. That's got to stick. That's got to be a little uncomfortable when you're on the bus. We don't take a lot of buses. We take the train sometimes. <laughs> yeah, up on the subway, a, a question about dicks pops in your mind. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Why do you put your, do you put wine on your dick? You know when it's really uncomfortable is when you're in church. <laughs> when... When you ask the priest if he puts his dick in the sacramental wine, that does not go over well. I'm not allowed to take <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Well, finally tonight, it is time to talk about the, the, the reason for the season, the true meaning of the holidays, and that that is being is giving and 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 Donating things to your fellow man, that's a big part of this holiday season. And you know, that that is a good impulse. However, you may want to consider not, you should not exactly give everything to your fellow man. Oh no. Live grenade found at Goodwill. Winfield, Kansas, uh, Kansas a spokesperson says a live grenade was found among donated items at a Goodwill store in Winfell. Processes the store discovered the grenade when they went through items that were part of a large donation. Workers evacuated the store and called police. The store remained closed for four hours until bomb squad personnel from Sedgwick County could arrive and remove the device. The grenade was determined to be live with explosive material inside it was safely removed, detonated, and disposed of. I mean, I guess if you didn't need it anymore, somebody <laughs> might. Edna! Edna! <laughs> we got this here old box of grenades. We'll take <laughs> it on down to the Goodwill. We ain't need no grenades no more. And somebody else might. <laughs> I had friends, actually. I, I They're still my friends, but they used to live in a house in Waterbury, Connecticut. And th they were watching the news, one of them at work one day, and they saw their house on the news. And they found out upon coming home that the house, like, two doors down from them had had for years a live world war ii era missile in the basement and like three different tenants had come and gone in the time this thing was there and just nobody addressed it and finally <laughs> somebody was like we should probably call somebody <laughs> thing in the basement. it's a live fucking missile they had to evacuate the whole neighborhood <laughs> bomb squads in there fbi Oh, just nobody bothered to do anything about that. Just I don't know what that thing is. It's like the guy in fucking hot fuzz. Ah, it's just a pile of junk. Hey, it's just amazing, boy. Yes, it's just a bunch of junk. Yeah. It's, somebody, in, somebody in the channel is talking about it. You know, grenade goodwill. Shit, it was ninety nine cents. <laughs> yeah. Um. The little, the little grenadier boy was like, I have no other gift but this. And Joseph and Mary were like, no, we're good. <laughs> How does that happen? It was probably in the bottom of some fucking box and they just brought the whole box down. 
and didn't look in it very carefully. How do you just like casually drop, you know, a grenade in with your knickknacks and your bric-a-brac? <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that winds up in your paperback book box, but get, so you know, people are disorganized. You should see my fucking desk. This, it's, it's a grenade, Tara. You don't have any grenades in the house, do you? God, you had to think about that. It's the, it's not a letter if opener. I'm not on the air next week. It's because Dan blew me the fuck up. It's not a letter opener. It's not a snow globe. It's a grenade. I wait. Oh, man, okay. My dad passed away. We had to go through all of his stuff. And I was very aware that he had guns in the house. And, you know, very carefully itemized, was aware of where the fuck, because boom, it's gone. See, we didn't have that with my parents. We found many, many stashes of cash. My parents both, like we had to, every jacket, we had to go through the pockets, every drawer we had to go through because both of them just compulsively, like $20 here, $50 there, like their rainy day fund was all over the house so that if anyone ever robbed the house, they would never get it all. So like you could leave no stone unturned because there was just fucking cash everywhere. Even that is more sensible than just misplacing <laughs> just grenades. A fucking explosive. Well, I mean, I guess if you have grenades stashed all over the house, if anybody robs the house, they're in for a surprise. But then so are you if you're home. <laughs> Bang! We got a robber! We got one! <laughs> you we know, it's cheaper one. than ADT. <laughs> That's the redneck alarm system. It's just live grenades in every fucking room. Disciple of a Smiling God says, best Easter egg hunt ever. Oh, no, no, no. Worst Easter egg hunt ever. I guess the first thing we learned this week is if you're going to donate stuff to Goodwill, maybe organize it a bit before you just drop off a box. Keep a running inventory of your deadly weapons. I'd say is also a good thing to know. Yeah. Any explosives you have in the home, know where they are. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have explosives in the home to begin with. I mean, ideally, sure. But if for some reason you do, just know where they are. We've learned that we, we've learned that maritime law does not apply to flying the friendly skies. No. Just because you get on a plane does not mean you suddenly start act a fool, do whatever the fuck you want. It don't work that way. And that apparently I, the whole time I was single, was missing out by not dipping my boyfriend's dicks in wine. We've learned that if, if you're shopping with a stolen credit card... Aim high. The deals are not. not they don't matter. You don't need to look for, you don't need to go, you don't need to have the coupon flyer with you. No, I it, mean, that's considerate of you, I guess, but you still stole their credit card, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. We've learned that Black Friday has evolved from a battle for deals to just the a battle. battle. <laughs> it's, it's now... It, our new pastime, instead of going out and fighting one another for television sets, we're just going out the day after Thanksgiving and fighting one another. Look out of each other. And, you know, some families just do that at Thanksgiving. Yeah. So. Yeah. And finally, we learned that if people can't get their Black Friday brawls on, on camera, they'll fake them. Yeah, I don't know why you would do that. Maybe to advertise that vegetable steamer? That's not very good viral marketing. No. Because no one's going to go, damn, I wish I had that vegetable steamer. That's a sentence that's never been said. Never been said before. No one has ever gone, I really want that vegetable steamer. No one has ever said that. 
we're the first that i think we're the first we're first humans in history to speak that sentence say. yes come here oh what what do you want why do you disturb my slumber say hi so I'm, I'm thankful for humans that do whatever the fuck I want. Except right now, apparently. Except for waking me up all the time when I'm sleeping. 